All ready to get racing? All right, what's up, party people? We are back in the house. It's Dizzle. You're on the Drew Dillman YouTube channel, and this is the Louisville Short Track Series. It's been going on for a long time. I'm a big fan of it. It's been a staple of my cycling career ever since I was a junior. So let's just dive right in. Short Track. Go, Todd. This guy shows up late to the party. He almost missed the start of the race. All right, here we go. We got George Frazier right in front of me. He's in the pink jersey. He's on that Bear Development team. I think he's only 16 years old. Um, and honestly, he's the biggest threat at this race, which is kind of funny. I remember being that 16-year-old uh, that the local pros were afraid of, and now here I am, a washed-up uh, local pro, and I'm afraid of this 16-year-old kid. He's already on the front, um, and I am pretty far back. I'm not a good starter. This isn't new information to me. I've known this for a long time. I just lack that, um, you know, kill it, uh, take people out kind of mentality, aggressiveness, assertiveness on the on the first lap. And so even going into this turn right here, I get passed by two guys. There's one, and then another guy's gonna pass me through the turn. I was setting up wide for the turn to be able to come out of it fast, and of course. That's a huge open door for the guy behind me. So he slides past me and then I come right around him. Um, there's only a couple spots on the track where you could really stand up and get a lot of speed and this was one of them. Um, and so yeah, that's where I'm doing a lot of the pedaling, doing a lot of the passing. Right here again, I try, I'm gonna try to pass this guy but I lack that, you know, uh, thirst for blood kind of mentality and he uh yeah he gets me but then on the, these rocks i come around him those rocks were pretty cool those rocks are historical if you didn't know this is the site of the 2013 cyclocross world championships it was a historical day in the united states for it was the first time that the cyclocross world championships had ever been hosted outside of europe and it was right here on this property in Louisville, Kentucky. So those steps were a part of the race. Uh, they are known as Stonehenge. Um, during that race, we were running up them, but now we were going down them. The second half of the course, as you just saw, is very twisty, turny. Um, a couple little, uh, or one little spike climb there. Um, we're back on the pavement after lap one, so you've seen the full course. I'm gonna pass these guys. Like I said, George Fraser already has a little bit of a gap off the front, so now I've, I've passed my way up into second place, and I've got a little bit of work cut out to go from here to catch George. Heart rate is pretty high at this point, 191. I think my max is near 200, um, you know, 195 to 200, and so I'm slowly bringing him back you know, to start the excuses early, uh, I haven't ridden since Unbound. And so this was about a week and a half after Unbound. I think I had touched the bike once and then uh, and then I showed up on the short track. So uh, excuse number one is that I, uh, I hadn't ridden in 10 days. And so you can kind of tell from my heart rate that this was hard for me. We got George there doing a little bit of a slide out through that turn, but he saves it, no big deal. He's got it. So I'm gonna sit behind him. Um, yeah, I'm not afraid to pull tactics on a junior. Uh, yeah, it might be a local short track race and he might be 16 years old, but I don't care. Um, he's gonna flick me through. My heart rate is pretty high. So I'm not about to just go to the front and drill it because we need to. I'm gonna go to the front and kind of sit up and recover because that's, I kind of need to recover. So George can tell that I'm not going that hard. And so through these turns, he's gonna pipe up and say, hey man, they're catching us. To which I say, I don't care. And uh, I didn't really care. You have to be, uh, you know, 
be quite blunt. Uh, I didn't care if those guys behind us would catch us. If they if they caught us, uh, I was pretty confident that both me and George could just ride away from them again. We've already done that once, and so I'm sure we could do it again. And so uh, I wasn't afraid to play games. Um, playing games is a, is a part of racing. So despite him being nervous about them catching us, he still lets me pull. Uh, and again, I'm not pulling very hard. You can see that my heart rate is still high. 187, 188 is definitely high, but it's not as high as it as it was when I was chasing him down. Uh, I do put in a little bit of like a mini attack through the technical part of the course, which is kind of the second half of the course to see if I can't get a little bit of a gap on George and maybe expose some weaknesses. And I can tell that I'm possibly riding that second half of the course with all the turns and technical bit a little bit better than George, um, but not enough to like drop him or gap him. Like he is still right on my wheel. go again playing some games you can definitely tell that he's pedaling easy pedaling I'm easy pedaling um, I think if I was feeling good I would have attacked at this point you know like put in a big a big move uh, but I wasn't feeling that good and so I didn't really want to go much harder than what we were going to be totally honest and so I was totally fine with us easy pedaling and looking at each other and kind of going back and forth. So yeah, he finally, I mean, eventually he just forces me to go to the front, which is what you kind of have to do. If somebody's not wanting to pull through, in this case me, um, eventually you just pull over and put on the brakes. So uh, good on him for doing that and like making me, forcing me to go to the front. Um, because now I'm on the front doing some work and he's getting the chill behind me. He's gonna pass me to pick up the pace. I think he was a little nervous about the riders behind us catching us, and that's why he does this. Um, again, like I said, I wasn't so nervous about that, but he was, and so uh, here he is, another save, um, sliding through that turn. So again, here I am on the front on the second half of the course. And again, like I've said, I think that I'm a little faster than George on this part of the course. And so I'm thinking, okay, if I'm gonna lead through this section, then maybe I'll go a little bit harder and try to make George work a little harder to stay with me through this part of the course. Um, because I know that that maybe I'm, I'm a little bit better than it than him. So you can see I am pushing it, pushing the pace. The heart rate is up. I would say that this is a hard attack. Um, I was going hard here uh, with the intention of dropping George and leaving him. But on the pavement there, so I did have a little bit of a gap, but on the pavement there, he, he drags me down and catches me. So now he's back on my wheel. You can see his, his shadow right behind me. And how I felt in this race is that uh, I could I could spike my heart rate, but then I couldn't I couldn't keep going hard. Like I could go really hard for maybe a minute or two, but then I couldn't sustain that hard effort, and I'd, I'd eventually I would have to just sit up and pedal easy, which is what happened right there with two to go. So now we go into the last lap. As soon as he hears the bell, George attacks. I, I love that. I love the like go get it attitude. Like bro, this is last lap and we're duking this out. And so I, I love that he attacked me right there. That's pretty cool. So he's on the front drilling it. He gets a little bit of a gap on me, but I'm able to basically stay with him. We come together right here. Uh, he sees that I'm on his wheel. And so he kind of sits up. He's like, okay, that didn't work. Let's reassess. Now what's my next game plan? So we are, you can tell he is very soft pedaling. Um, and I know that I have to go into the, the the rocks first. So he looks left, I attack right, I get ahead of him down the Stonehenge, and I know that if I can go into this section in the front, there's a very small chance that he's beating me because there's not many opportunities to pass. So right here, 
is the last chance that he's gonna pass. And so around this turn, I'm gonna try to take up as much of the track as possible and I'm gonna be sprinting. So I'm sprinting all right here because if he can't pass me there, he's probably not gonna pass me now. And so from this point all the way to basically the pavement, I know that I've got the lead. And so I'm gonna pin it out of every turn. I'm accelerating, um, trying to create as much separation as possible. And even at this point, I've got a little bit of a gap. And once we hit the pavement for the finish, I look back and I've got about five seconds on George. And so yeah, I'm able to take the win, hit 195. Yes, somebody, Curtis Tolson was asking me how long till the new one, meaning the baby. And uh, I told him it was just a few hours. Uh, my wife uh, was was in was maybe in labor while I was at this race, uh, which is kind of funny. That kind of happened while I was riding to the short track race, and we ended up having our baby just a few hours after the race. Uh, I finished the race at about eight, and Cassie Beth was born at one a.m. that morning. Yeah, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you like what I'm doing here. And if you really like what I'm doing here, you can look at all the different ways that you can support me down in the description below. What's your name? Elliot. Elliot. I'm Drew. I'm yeah. friends with your dad. I'm the one that said you're so talented. Oh, <laughs> did she yell that? Yeah, Chase told me to. Good, if only you knew.